Hey guys, welcome back. It's the next day um, over at this job. Um, I stayed yesterday afternoon and I got this floor all fixed in the bathroom. So now it's pretty much flush with the kitchen. Grind that seam a little bit. I put the vanity or the light fans in and uh, mirrors on. Still got to put some plastic P uh, PVC trim around the tub. Um, I filled in this piece here. So basically, I just got done screwing down this floor. I'm gonna grind some of these seams down. I'll show you how that works real quick. Um, this is a grinder that hooks up to a HEPA vacuum. So pretty much it gets all the dust. Mainly this grinder is usually used for concrete, but you can use it for OSB and stuff as well. It just takes a little bit longer. But uh, let me just show you real quick what I'm gonna do to these seams because some of these seams are up a little bit right here. Um, if you run your hammer, you can hit that edge. So I want to try to feather this down a little bit. Um, the vacuum, uh, it turns on by itself when you turn the tool on. seams on the floor just to make sure they're nice and smooth so that when I put down that vinyl flooring because the vinyl flooring is real thin this will all show through and possibly could break the tongue and groove on the vinyl if it's bouncing around a lot because you have high seams like that so I'm gonna go ahead and grind down all the seams on this floor everywhere and then I'll come back and show you guys how I put in this uh, vinyl flooring okay all the seams are ground down um, I brought the refrigerator in here and the stove so that the floor doesn't get scratched when somebody else is bringing them in. Um, I'm not going to hook them up or anything like that, but at least I can get the uh, floor in now and put the appliances in place and don't have to worry about them getting all the floor getting all screwed up. Um, so now I got to try to find some sort of a straight. I'm probably gonna end up starting off with this old floor. There's carpet going in here and they're gonna end up, my floor will kind of butt into this old wood floor and then there'll be a carpet metal that'll kind of cover over the edge of the floor. Um, problem is, is with this job, everything is so crooked. If you look down this wall, you could see that molding right there. You see that big dip in the wall, how it's just waving all over the place. So there's really no straight walls in here. So I'm just gonna try to figure out I might have to snap a chalk line and do a couple measurements and just try to get as straight as possible. I mean, there's only so much you can do, especially when something is so uneven as this house. So let me uh, do a little thought and figure out, snap a chalk line or two, and then I'll show you guys what I came up with. So what I did, I measured off of this wall here and over there, and I put a mark over here, two marks, and then I snapped the chalk line straight down through. Um, I measured from this point because you see this wall dips towards the casing. So I measured from the high point because it seemed to match that side. Um, when I measured and when I laid this out, I am, let me show you here, over here from the old wood to the chalk line, I'm at 22 and a half. 22 and three quarters, so I'm only a quarter inch off right there. But this wall is so crooked that it goes from 
16 and an eighth down to 14 and a quarter. So that's almost two inches crooked, that wall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna run with it off of this wood floor. Keep that looking straight. It'll look straight along this wall, which makes it straight along those cabinets. Back there, it's gonna look crooked as can be, but you have a refrigerator, washer, and dryer going back there. So it's gonna be a lot less noticeable back there. You might notice it a little bit in front of the washer and dryer, you know, the floor going a little crooked, but you can always correct that by moving the appliances out a little bit. Unfortunately, there's really not much you can do. Let's take one more measurement here from the bathroom wall to the chalk line and just get an idea of what it'll look like when it makes it into the bathroom. 24 and 3 quarters, 124 and 3 quarters, 125 and 3 eighths. So we're still even, we're still crooked. Um, I could probably correct that a little bit by just, let's measure right to the wood floor from the bathroom. Because if I just start with a straight board off of this wood floor, let's see what happens. 148 and a quarter. One forty-seven and a quarter, still an inch crooked. I mean, there's really nothing I can do. Unfortunately, this house is just really, really crooked. Um, it being crooked back there in the bathroom will be a vanity and a toilet. So, I mean, it is what it is. There's only so much I can do. I'm basically going to just try to keep this wall looking straight because you're going to see that area when you walk in and you're going to see this area in the door opening when you walk in. So at least this will look straight and this will look pretty straight along this wall here. So let me go grab some flooring and we'll put a little bit in on camera and then I'll come back after a little bit and show you how it's looking. Okay, um, this piece has already been cut because I used it for uh, to cut the bottom of the door casings. And these here, I don't know what I'm going to do with because these are really high. It's actually drywall. The painter might just have to come in and fix that stuff up afterwards. But uh, I'm going to use my little my cutter here to just get some straight cuts going. So I'm going to cut the first piece. And on this flooring, there's a little pad on the back side. And then it has a little tongue here and a groove. And they just snap together. Let me get a measurement of the width of this door opening. 31 and 3 quarters. You want to leave a little bit of an expansion joint. Um, the manufacturers say that this stuff doesn't expand and contract, but that the material that is butting up against will expand and contract. That's what they say. I don't know that I believe that. So we're going to lay this first piece down here in the door opening, see how it looks. So if we leave that just like that, we might be able to start with a full board because it looks like this one's going to be real nice and close to the uh, wall. And because this is going at such an angle, I'm going to be cutting those by the time I get down there. But as you can tell, you can see what I was talking about. how that's going to look better being straight in that door opening because if i went off of this wall we would have like a uh let's say six inches on one side and seven and a half on the other it would look horrible when you walked into the kitchen so those are the type of things that you got to look out for and unfortunately in houses like this you just have to deal with it there's only so much you can do with it so they just kind of lift it they just you got to lift them at the right angle and drop them in place um, let me cut one, uh, it's kind of hard to film this and keep moving around. This stuff goes in really quick, doesn't take a long time to do. Honestly, this is probably only about an hour and a half to put this whole floor in. But we're starting with a piece that's a little bit more than half. Next, 
You want to stagger your joints at least six to eight inches apart, eight, eight to 10 preferably. Um, I do use a tapping block to lightly tap them in to make sure that they're sealed, they're uh, clicked together well. But you gotta be really careful with this stuff. You don't wanna hit it hard. Just a light tap is all you need. Now, if you look here, what I'm gonna do, since I know that this wall is going so crooked, I'm actually gonna run that second row down first. And then I'll come back, make my cuts along the wall, because then I can take measurements and be able to cut it better. If I try to just hold this board up like this and mark it and cut it, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be right. I'm gonna have too big of a gap. So we're gonna drop this one in here. And like I said, you can use a tapping block or you can use the palm of your hand too. But as you can see how this is kind of bouncing around a little bit in the air, that's because it's not completely locked in place. So if you take this uh, tapping block and you lightly hit it, see how it went down? So now I'm gonna start the next row. And my next row, I'm gonna start, here's my first row, which was a full board. Then I have a seam here. Let's put a seam right here. Save your cut pieces, because you can use them for the other side. So let's drop this one in. Tap it down a little bit. Okay, now I have this piece left over from when I did the door opening. We're going to start the next row with this one. So by doing this, what I'm doing is I'm creating joints on the floor that are just randomly staggered. I don't like it when every other row is lined up. That's not how these floors are supposed to be installed. You're supposed to just have random joints not too many of them lining up with each other down the floor. So let's let's continue down with the second row out. Now we'll come back to the third row, put this one in. What we we'll want to do is we want to get a couple rows out and then fill in that back piece in case anything needs to be adjusted or moved. Do it before you cut that back piece. I'm actually gonna move down here with the camera. Maybe if I lower it a little bit, that'll help. This stuff is, is, you know, it's pretty easy to put together once you get used to it. The main thing, like I said, is don't hit it really hard. You will break it. All right. Uh, you can see how horrible that's looking along that wall right there. Once I get these couple rows run down, I'm going to take another measurement to that bathroom wall and see what it looks like. Because we can still fix this. If we need to adjust this, we can still still adjust it a little bit. I mean, I could probably fudge the uh, opening into the living room, maybe a quarter inch or so. And if the carpet guys are good, they can turn that metal a little bit to kind of compensate for that and have it look straight still. But you never know how they'll do. And what I'm doing is I'm stepping on the back row to kind of hold it in place a little bit so it doesn't slide all over the place. Okay, let's 
take a couple measurements and see what it looks like. Because right now, to me, it looks horrible. But we're looking at that seam in the OSB, which obviously is crooked as well with everything else. Let's just get an idea how we're looking. And then, like I said, I can still move this around. It's not a problem. We're just under 49 inches right there. Now we're at 48 and a quarter, so we are still a little crooked. So how do I want to correct this? 49 over there. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to have to take this part of the floor right here. And there's going to be a bigger gap over here. So I'm going to have to slide this floor that way on this side. Leave this side touching still. I don't want to go a ton, but I need to go a little bit to try to balance out the crookedness of the kitchen. Um, and like I said, when the carpet guys come to put a metal down, you know, if they're good, they can make that metal look straight still. And the other good thing is, is that this is a seven and a quarter inch wide board or whatever it is. So that seam is way up there. So, and this grain's got like some, it's going on an angle. So that's gonna help disguise it if it is a little crooked. But let's see if we can't, slide this out on this side a little bit and see what happens. Try to come up with a happy medium here. I mean, like I said, it's not going to anywhere near be perfect. So I moved that out almost a quarter. Let's see what our measurements look like now. 48 and a, just about 48 and a quarter. Over here, we're at 48 and a half. So now we're within a quarter of an inch by just moving it that little bit. So let's go a, a hair more. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it there. So let's check the measurement one more time. 48, just about 48 and a quarter, a hair under. Over here, we're at just under 48 and a half. So, we're about a, little, a quarter inch or so crooked, which is much better than what it was before. Should I try to fudge it a little bit more? Let's try just a little bit more. I don't really have much more room I can go because then the baseboard's not gonna wanna cover. Now we're at 48 and an eighth. 48 and a quarter. We still have some movement over here. Okay, so we're gonna leave it there. At least our, along the cabinets and stuff won't look too bad. It'll be pretty straight along those cabinets and stuff. Obviously, look at this wall. You can see how it's a full board right here. And when you get down there, you're gonna, I'm gonna be taking two inches off that board. But like I said, this looks good in the door opening. Even though it's a quarter inch crooked, you really can't see that and it's gonna look good along going into the bathroom doorway. Now, the back wall is gonna look like crap again, but there's gonna be a vanity and a toilet right next to it, so you're not gonna see it. So now, a lot of people would say, all right, well, let's just put another full one in right here on this row. I could put a full one here, but I have a full one here, which is only three rows away, so I don't wanna do that. That's the lazy way of doing it. So, I know I have a seam here and here, and I have a seam way down here, and I have a seam right here. So let's split it up, and let's put a seam right here. So we'll spin this board backwards, and we'll just make a mark right here. And we'll put a seam there, which doesn't correspond with any other seams on the floor yet. So as of right now, we are one, two, three, four, five, six rows in to the kitchen and none of the seams are lining up with each other yet. Okay, I gotta go get another box of material. Okay, I want to finish this row down and all these other rows make the cut along the wall, and then we're gonna move the refrigerator onto the floor, because I don't wanna to get too far this way, 
and then we have to roll the refrigerator even farther on the new floor. start making these cuts. Um, the countertops are supposed to be here today so we can put those in. I'm going to put the vanity back in and the toilet. Um, we don't have the filler pieces that go between the wall and the cabinet. Uh, the owner still hasn't picked them up. He said he's just going to put them in himself so we don't have to worry about doing that. So I'm going to cut this one real quick. Now I could have used one of the pieces that I had cut from the other side, but I'm not doing that right now because the cuts I'm making off of these full boards, I'm going to use to start that side. So those other cuts will save in case we need them towards the end of the job. So now I'm going to cut this next row here. And I usually try to leave about a quarter inch gap between uh, any wall or anything. Um, I'll go a little bit tighter in the cabinet area so that the trim will cover the cabinets or the will cover the gap in the floor. Okay, now we have two more rows to finish up down. So now we got two more full boards to put in. see how quick this goes. So now we're going to make these last two cuts. And then we'll do the ripper cut along the wall. And then I'm going to move back to the refrigerator and then I'll probably uh, keep installing off a camera for a little bit and then I'll come back and show you what it's looking like. Normally I would want to put the countertops on before I put the floor in, but it's not here yet. It's supposed to be here in a little while, and I don't want to sit around and do nothing, so we'll just be a little bit more careful with the floor. But these floors are pretty uh, durable. They can handle quite a bit. I'm not saying if you got a nail in the bottom of your shoe or something like that, you probably will scratch the floor. But for the most part, they're pretty durable. So now we're putting in a full one here and I have like a three inch piece left over there. We're going to use one of those scraps that I have from cutting those starter pieces. Okay, so I have like a six or seven inch piece right here. I'll cut this off here. Before we cut along the wall, I want to measure one more time. I want to make sure that this floor didn't move a lot because we could still, once again, adjust it out if we need to. We're at 41 and an eighth. 41 and 3 eighths, so we're quarter inch, it's about what we were before. So we're fine there. So now we're going to make this, these cuts along this wall here. I used to always, it's 
almost all flooring and I would just stay on the ground the whole time and just make all my cuts with a knife and everything. But uh, my knees are going bad. So I've been standing up more and installing rather than crawling around on my knees. Um, obviously this row here, I need to do that. But let me grab my pry bar because I'm gonna need the pry bar to pry this row in. Now you gotta keep in mind that this piece here is backwards. So we're putting it in this way. So you gotta make sure you keep doing that. You don't spin it around on yourself by mistake because that could definitely happen. So on this first row here, obviously it's a full board to about there. So this one's not too bad. So we're just gonna take my marker. I'm gonna stick my finger between the marker and the wall. And I'm just gonna run this down. There's nails sticking out of the wall. I'm just gonna go like that with that. And we're gonna score and crack this with my knife. One score usually does it. Then you can crack it. You just gotta get through that top layer. Then once you crack it, you're gonna have to go back and score this padding on the back side off, or score through it so that you can get the piece off. Okay, now we can get this piece in. Now these are a little bit more difficult because you can't put your end joint in first, like I was doing before. I was putting the end joint in first and then tapping the long one in. You got to kind of do it opposite. Sometimes you can get lucky, but a lot of times you got to just do it opposite. So what I need to do is get this thing to lock in place. Okay, that's in. Now this is gonna to wanna to bounce around on you. If you're working by yourself, find something to kind of hold that down. If you have somebody with you, they can push it down for you. So I'm just gonna come down here. And lightly. Sometimes you gotta tap this end down. And then finish tapping it in. in so now what I'm gonna do is finish up those rippers the rest of the way down and then I'll come back we'll move the refrigerator and we'll continue on okay I have this section done you really can't see how crooked it looks now that the floor is in it doesn't look too bad once that refrigerator goes in there it's gonna break it up and you won't notice it now the next thing I always do is before I move this refrigerator back onto the floor I'm gonna take a scrap piece of flooring and I'm gonna snap it into this tongue and groove. By doing that, if I chip anything, I'm gonna chip the edge of this scrap piece and it doesn't matter. I won't be messing up the edge of the good floor. So now, this is, doesn't really wanna roll very good. but it's really light because there's no doors on it. So I'm gonna kind of take the one side and tilt it, and I'm gonna swing it onto the floor so that that wheel is back far enough to be under the refrigerator in case I scratch it a little bit. Now, what I can do is I can kind of tilt it back a little bit in order to just like that where are we hitting on the back of the refrigerator okay so now we're up onto the floor we didn't scratch the floor at all and we didn't ruin this edge we got lint from underneath the refrigerator 
So we did not ruin this edge at all and the floor is not scratched. So now I can continue on and put this next section in, which will take me to this wall and then we'll knock out the bathroom, the kitchen, and then we'll be ready to start putting up the baseboard, which um, I think it's four and a quarter inch baseboards going around the walls. Whatever doesn't get covered up, the painter will have to fix afterwards. Um, we're not putting a transition piece here because right now we're about flush with the wood. So the carpet guys will put a metal there and I don't know what their plans are here, what they're planning on doing there because that's about a three quarter inch drip, drop. So I don't know if they're just gonna ramp the carpet up to the edge of the vinyl or what they plan on doing. Here, obviously you can see there's an old threshold here underneath this one. So I think we're just gonna put a flat metal over it. Once again, guys, this is a rental property. This isn't somebody's personal house. So you gotta kind of not put too much uh, time and labor and money into them because they're just gonna get destroyed over time. You know, so you, you wanna do a nice job, but you don't wanna go crazy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed up to this wall right here. And I'll come back and show you guys what it's looking like. Okay, let's put in this piece here that I have laying off. Well, I guess I wasn't recording. Um, I'll have to show you guys on another spot, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece in here. Okay, I have to make a new piece because I screwed up this edge with my tapping block. This is what I mean by you cannot tap it too hard because I, I screwed that edge up. So I took this piece and I traced it onto another one and I'm remaking it now. And I'm gonna try to put it back in without breaking it. Ready here. Grab something real quick. Okay, we'll move this up a little bit. See if we can get this one in without ruining the edge. Next one's easy, that was a hard one. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this row up all the way down. And you can see how this looks a lot straighter than the other side does. So at least when you walk in the kitchen, anything that's visible will look pretty straight. This cabinet is a little bit crooked because this wall is going on an angle, but it's not too bad. Okay, bathroom floor is in. Now I'm gonna go finish the kitchen floor and then I can come in here and put the vanity in the baseboard, the toilet, and all that stuff. All right, I'm cutting these countertops down and I'm using my multi-tool because if you look here, it makes a perfect cut with no chipping at all. And this is going against the drywall. It's gonna end up getting a caulk seam anyway, so it's not gonna matter. But um, using a circular saw and stuff like that really chips these up. All the floors in, the vanity's installed, but not the plumbing because I don't have the right pipes for that right now. But I'll show you guys around here in a little bit. Okay, I'm working on cutting these countertops. I have this one cut. I had to cut this one on an angle from 16 and three quarters to 16 and an eighth in the back, but now at least it's going pretty straight along the wall before, I mean, if I wouldn't have cut it, it would have been a huge gap. 
Um, this one right here, because these are preformed countertops and this lip, there's a lip here that sets over the edge of the cabinet. Um, because these cabinets stuck out so far because this wall is so bowed that I actually had to cut part of that lip off underneath. So what I did was I took my multi-tool, it's kind of hard to see with the sun, but I took my multi-tool and I cut this back. You can see how much I took off. So hopefully now it'll be closer to the wall. Um, and then whatever, you know, doesn't cover, he'll just have to run a beater caulk. I'm not hooking up any of the sinks. I don't have the right plumbing for it. So he's gonna take care of all that. But I got the sink mounted in here. The, this is an old sink that was already in here. I remounted it in here. I glued down the top. Um, this is getting rubber cove base on the walls in here. I almost put wood up. I didn't realize he was using rubber. He wants to put rubber up in here just so he doesn't have to worry about the wood swelling up from people getting it wet. Um, so we'll get this trimmed out next after I get these countertops done. Once I get this countertop fitting, um, I got to cut that sink in, get that sink cut in and get that mounted. And I got to see, I don't know if I have any inch and a quarter screws with me to screw these countertops down or not. I'll have to check in my van. So let me set up the tripod. I'll get the uh, cap countertop, bring it in here. We'll slide this one on and see if it fits. Okay, I'm going to go out there and grab that. much nicer still a little gap right here but the wall is bowing real bad he's just gonna have to silicone that or put some tile on the backsplash I'm not sure he's gonna put the edges on too um, these are these uh, pre-made edges that you uh, iron onto the cabinet he's taking care of all that uh, I just need to get these mounted and get the counter or uh, the hole cut and the sink mounted on the top but uh, these are the stupid things you have to do and fudge around to make look somewhat decent, you know what I mean? So basically what's happening over here is this has an overhang a little bit, but it's flush over here, but it looks a million times better over there. So you gotta kind of like pick and choose what you want something to look like. Because if this, if I wouldn't have cut that back, this is what it would have looked like. I mean, I could stick my fingers behind the wall and the countertop, so you don't want that. You'd rather have a little bit off here versus that because this is easier to seal up when it's tighter against the wall. You don't have to worry about water getting down behind your wall and rotting out your drywall and everything else over here. I don't know if they put green board up or not over here. I don't know if that's the original drywall. I, I didn't see the place before he started re, uh, redoing it. So now I'm gonna go grab the sink. There should be a paper template or a cardboard template in the box to mark this countertop for the uh, to cut the hole. Okay, this is a Glacier Bay sink and they don't give you a template anymore. They used to, but they don't. So basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, this is my center point right here of this base cabinet, the sink base cabinet. So I'm just gonna eyeball this to get my center mark. So I know that that's center of the counter or the cabinet underneath. And I'm gonna have to kind of uh, just kind of figure this out at the measure. 24 and a quarter. 21 and 3 eighths. far because if I don't this uh, locking lip right here is going to hit the edge of this cabinet so if you look down here this right here that piece of wood goes all along here so you got to make sure you shove this sink back far enough if not this lip right here is going to hit on that end and then you're going to run into a problem so basically it looks like I'm probably my best bet is going to be to just run this tight 
against the back of the cabinet or against the back of the backsplash, which is going to be about three eighths inches off of it. So three eighths inches off of here. Let's do half inch. We should be fine with half inch. So then I'm going to take my finger and hold it between the marker and the back splash and just draw a straight line. Um, and we said it's 24 and a quarter. I'm going to remeasure this to make sure 24 and a quarter is really tight. So hopefully uh, I can always make it bigger, you know. So if we're at 24 and a quarter, that means 12 and an eighth from the center line each way. So we're going to go 12 and an eighth this way. And then we can just go to 24 and a quarter over here. And then we'll repeat that over here. Actually, I'm going to grab my square. Now right here on the corner, I'm going to radius the corner. I don't want to cut it square because then I run the risk of uh, it not covering. We got to come out 21 and 3 eighths. But once again, I'm going to run my finger on the, along the edge of the cabinet or countertop rather. I made a mark down there too, so I should line up with it. Okay. Okay, I have it marked. I'm going to remeasure. 21 and 3 eighths. 21 and 3 eighths. Okay, that's within an eighth of an inch. Just over 24 and a quarter. Just over 24 and a quarter. Okay, so we should be good to go. So now, I'm gonna cut this with my multi-tool. The same tool I use to cut the uh, countertop down. Um, we grab it. I have two different ones here. We got a new blade on one of them. I'm not gonna show cutting the whole thing, but give you an idea here. cut the other three sides and we'll come back and see if it fits before I fasten this countertop down I want to put the sink in and I'm gonna mount the sink with the countertop loose so I could just 
pivot it up so I have to lay under there on my back trying to put all those screws to hold it in. For some reason my camera stopped recording. It fits. Um, I don't know if that was on the, if it showed up or not on the camera. Um, so now I'm going to clean up all this dust and um, get ready to mount this. Okay, now we're going to get ready to mount this sink here. I'm going to flip up the countertop. Hopefully, you can kind of hold it and do it. screws they slide into this rail and then there's a little flathead you can use a flathead screwdriver on the bottom and then you have to put these clips on each rail gets three of these so one on each end and one in the middle once I get it started it won't be so bad I'll start on the one in the middle these are the clips you slide over those pins too hard by myself so it looks like I'm just gonna have to mount this from underneath so let me get this mounted and I'll come back okay sinks in all the countertops are uh, fastened to the cabinets so I'm done with that all I have left is electrical and trim in this area and then uh, in the bathroom I've got the trim on around the walls for the tub and along the bottom of the tub along the floor there. All that stuff is PVC uh, quarter round so that if it gets wet, it doesn't um, swell up and get ruined. Now I'm getting ready to put the uh, brown coat base up on the walls. This stuff just cuts with a knife, glue it up there. I'll show you real quick. When you're cutting, be careful, put a board or something underneath it. I've just been doing it a long time, so I'm not too worried about cutting through. And then this just goes on the wall, and we just glue it up there. This is glue made for this uh, coat base. these two pieces up and then uh, I'll come back and we'll put the toilet on. I'll show you how I uh, bolt the toilet down. Okay, um, on this toilet flange, it's lower than the floor. So we're going to double up on the wax rings. <coughs> But what I'm going to do first is I got to go to the van and get another nut and bolt, or nuts rather, but that's fine. Uh, it didn't even come with any. Okay, let me go uh, grab some. So basically, what I have here is I have a wax ring that has a plastic piece that goes down, and then this wax ring does not have that plastic piece. This one's going to sit on top of that one. Let me go grab some nuts and bolts, and I'll be right back. I have two sets here. I'm going to use these longer ones and I'll just cut them with my bolt cutter after I install the toilet. 
So what I want to do is the right way to do this is to put a washer on and a nut. And you want to tighten this to the flange, this bolt. By tightening this bolt to the flange, it keeps it from wanting to spin when you try to tighten your upper one. These will not get in the way of the toilet, even if this flange is flush with the floor, it still will not get in the way with, with uh, the toilet. So we'll slide these in here. Looks like they might have gotten blue or something in this one. What do they got going on here? There we go. You can measure off the wall if you want to so that they're both the same, but you got a little bit of play. Twist your bolt when you go to tighten it at first so that it's locked in there good. Okay, now we don't have to worry about those spinning on us when we go to put the other nut on top. So now we're gonna take this wax ring, put this one down first, and then we're going to put this extra one on just to be on the safe side to make sure that it makes good contact with the bottom of the toilet. A lot of guys will put these on the toilet themselves. I always put them on the floor. I've never had a problem with it. So I'm going to open up this other package here and take the washer, the washers and the nuts out so we can use them. Um, I don't know that there are plastic caps for this toilet because this is a used toilet so we might not have the plastic caps that normally cover up the uh, bolts they can always put those on later so let me go grab the toilet okay let's set this on just want to carefully set it down kind of sit on it and rock it back and forth a little bit and then it drops right down onto the floor nice and tight we'll put our washer on and our nut we do not have the plastic caps you can either a looks like there's a piece for it okay I have the pieces for it that's fine so put this plastic piece on first washer over top then our nut We'll tighten this down and then we'll cut it with the bolt cutters. They can clean all the toilet and everything. I'm not doing any of that stuff. Looks like they had to cut the last bolts off. The old flange was rotted pretty bad. that the toilet is tight and not rocking around. Okay, take our bolt cutters. Now the cap can go on once they get new caps. I always tighten it a little more after I cut the bolt, just to make sure it's not loose. Just gotta hook up my water line now.
Okay, let's turn it on, see, see what happens. Doesn't have a ton of water pressure, but it's filling up. So that's how I install the toilets so that you don't have to worry about it. It's nice and tight. It's not wiggling around. All right. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the rest of this place trimmed out. And uh, I'll just show you a final real quick walkthrough when I'm done. And then uh, hour or so I'm gonna be done with this job for the day. Actually, for I'll be done here. They'll finish everything else up. So I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, I'm done with this job. Everything else is up to the owner and the painter. It's all trimmed out. Bathroom's all together. But just a real quick two-day job here. So, all right, that's going to wrap this one up. And that's going to wrap up this job. I will see you guys later.